How's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the password retrieval for our register and login system. And I just want to share with you something really funny that happened in the last few hours. Um, somebody actually visited our HowKTV website with almost nothing on it and they registered on it. So thank you Safi Ahmed for that. And I think we can go over to the site now and uh, we can just try this baby out. So we're at um, howktv.com slash login here. And um, I have a user account here. I see my name right here and uh, the email. So what we're going to do here is we are just going to, uh, we're going to say we forgot our password here. And we're going to get sent to this reset password method of the login controller. And I'm just going to put my email in here and we're going to click reset my password. And then we're going to get this confirmation that uh, an email has been sent to us and to check our spam folders. So you'll see here in my Gmail, I have a new email here and it says, please reset your password at Freight Forum. So we'll click on this. And uh, again, we have an HTML email here and uh, we want to help you reset your password. Please click here to reset your password. Now, um, you can't really see what is the path right here. I think I can just go um, copy link address and paste it up here. Okay, we can see it now. So we are sending them to the login controller and then the reset password form uh, method. And then the first parameter is the email address. And then the second one is this, um, you know, like secret password we put on the end of that. And I'll show you um, what that's all about. So if we click on this link here, um, it's going to open a new window and we're going to get sent to uh, that link that I just posted. And then we can enter our new password here. Um, let's just do a password of password. And actually, just before I do this, let's go to the database and you'll see here that um, my account right here, it starts with 597 for the uh, in that SHA-1 password right there. And we'll just click update right here. And it says your password has been updated. And I'm just going to go right here to my database and I'm going to refresh here. And you'll see now it doesn't start with 597, it starts with 8367. So we've updated our password there. So we can just go over to where this is all happening, the login controller and the reset password method. And I'll just open up my ID right here and we'll see that right here. And the first thing we're doing is we're checking, you know, is the form being submitted to this method right now or are we here for the first time? Um, so, you know, the first time we just go here, this post email, um, this is not going to be set. So, you know, we're just loading in those views right here. And the view that we're loading in is a view reset password. So um, we can open that up. It's right here. And pretty simple form right here. Um, basically, uh, we just uh, ask for their email address. And then they just click the button to submit their password. And this gets submitted to um, that same method we were just looking at, reset password. And we can go back to that. And this time when they uh, reach here, um, post email is going to be set. So we're going to load in the form validation library and after that we are going to do some validation on the email address. Just make sure it's a valid email. Uh, we're going to trim it and we are going to make sure it's a valid email, that there's no SQL injection in there. And then we can go down here. Um, if there if there was some problems with the form validation, we're going to send them back to uh, view login and we're going to just say um, please supply a valid email address. Actually, I don't think we're supposed to be sending them to view login here. We should be sending them to um, to view reset password. So um, I'll come back to that later. But um, I think most of the time there's not going to be there's not going to be any problem here. They're going to put in a valid email address uh, because they're going to want to get their password back. But I'll just make um, like an, a note here that's broken and come back to this later. Um, but if they put in a valid email address, we are going to uh, trim the email first and then we're going to run this method right here, model login and then email exists. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if this email exists in our database or not right now. So let's go over to uh, model login and the um, email exists password, or sorry, the email exists method. And that little method is right here. It takes the email address and then we're going to select first name email from users where the email is set to email and we only want one result back. And uh, we're running the query and then 
Because we're only expecting one row back, we're going to use Code Igniter's result row here. And then we can access the things in that um, using just like row email because you'll see I stored it in this row variable right here. So what we're doing here is we're checking if um, the number of rows returned was equal to one and if the email was there. And if that is so, then we're going to return the first name or else we're going to return false. So we can go over to that function, send reset uh, password email, which is right here. And we're loading in the email library here. And then we're creating email code. And for the email code, what I decided to do was use the salt and then concatenate the first name and then run MD5 on it. And uh, after that, you know, we just start constructing the email right here. And then we have this uh, login uh, reset password form. And then the first parameter is the email address and the second one is the code. And the reason why we have the code right here is so they can't just put anybody's email address in here. Um, we're actually going to do a check when this gets sent back to us um, that um, this code is correct. And you'll, you'll see how that works in a bit. And we just make the rest of the message right here. And then we send off the email. So we know that when they click on the link, um, it's going to get submitted to the reset password form method. So we can just um, we can go over to that, uh, which is right here. And the first parameter there is the email and the email code. These are getting passed um, through the URL string. And if those are set, we're just going to trim the email just in case they had some spaces after, uh, which they probably won't. And then the we're creating an email hash after that. And we're setting that to email and then concatenate on the email code and then run SHA-1 on it. And the reason why we need to create an email hash is that um, when we send this over to the view, um, you know, they also could just change the email address there and they could put someone else's email. Um, so we needed to create this hash and um, you'll see how that works when, uh, when I show you the form. So um, we also running this method here. Um, verify reset password code. So that um, that code that got sent in through the URL, uh, we're going to do a check on it just to make sure um, there's nothing funny going on there. Um, so we can go over to this method in our model, verify reset password code. And let's just go over to our model right here. And we can find that function right here. And we're selecting the first name, the email from users, where the email is set to their email. So if the number of rows was equal to one and we found their first name and email um, in our database, then we're going to do a check on that code. And the check we're doing here is we're checking if code is equal to um, the salt and then concatenate the first name and then run MD5 on this. And if this is equal to true, then this verify reset password code is going to return true or else it's going to return false. So basically what we were doing here is we were doing the same sort of thing that we were doing um, when we created this code to begin with. Um, if we go over to the login controller here, you'll see the email code was set to MD5 and then running on the salt and then concatenate the first name. So basically all we're doing here is we're just, you know, checking that this is the same. And this stops the user from, you know, taking that, uh, taking that link that they sent to, like um, this one right here. We can't I'm just going to copy this right now and paste it in, uh, paste in here. Actually, it's just paste in the top. And you'll see that, you know, we have the email address here. This just stops them from putting someone else's email address here. Um, they would also need to put in the correct hash in order to, you know, hack someone else's account and change their password. And they're not going to be able to come up with this, even if they understand SHA-1. Um, we put our salt on top of that. So, um, they're not going to be able to decode this. So um, that was the reason why we sent this code um, along with it. So we're back in our reset password form uh, function right here. And we've got true return to this verified right now. And if true, then we're going to do this stuff right here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to send them to the view update password view. And we're going to send that some information. We're going to send that this email hash and also the email code and the email. And the reason why we need to create an email hash here is because they already have this code right here and we need to um, we need to create a new code now to you know stop them from hijacking someone else's account um, inside this view update password form. 
So what I did was I created this email hash here and the email hash is just SHA1 being running on uh, the email and the email code that we have right here. And we're going to send that over to the view. So um, let's go over to that view right now, view update password. So you can see what's going on here. We're checking if the email hash and email code were set. And if they are, we're creating these two hidden input fields. And these are going to sort of serve as the security for our site. And, um, you know, even though these are hidden input fields, I think they can still change them within Chrome by, you know, updating the value if they, you know, inspect it and they, you know, get they get into the DOM there and they start changing the value of this. But they're not going to be able to um, figure out what is the right email hash, even if they are able to change it. And if it's not correct, then they're not going to be able to update the password. So if anyone's trying, you know, any sort of funny business with these, um, I don't think it's going to work. So let's just keep going with our form here. Um, the email, we're actually, we're passing them that for convenience. If that's set, then we just, um, we echo the email value right here. And we did that inside our login controller. We sent the hash to it and the email code um, that was originally sent to the email and also the email right there. And everything from this form is going to get submitted to this um, update password uh, function right here. So we can go over to that in our login controller. And in the update password, the very first check we're doing is we're checking um, if the post email and the hash email hash are set. So if either of these things are value to true, if the um, these posts are not set, or if the email hash is not how we're expecting it, then we're just going to die right here and we're going to click error updating your password. Because I think if one of these are value to true, then we're probably dealing with a hacker. So we don't need to be polite with them. We don't need to send them back to the login form. Um, we're just going to die and they're just going to see a white page and it's going to say error updating your password. If they got past this part, we're going to load in the form validation library and then we're going to set some rules um, on all of the uh, information that got sent to us. We're checking the email hashes required and we're checking the email is a valid email and we're also checking the, the password is equal to the password conf name field and you know just sort of doing the usual checks on here. So if there's any problem with these form validations right here, um, they're going to get sent back to the view update password login thing right here and CodeIgniter is going to show them um, you know whatever errors they had because um, in the view update password we have the uh, we're echoing the validation error so that's going to show them whatever errors they had with that and we don't have to do anything about that. Um, if all of the form validation was fine, then um, we can do this method right here, which is uh, inside our model login, and we're going to update the password now. So inside our update password function, we're first getting the email from the uh, global post array, and then we're recreating their password. So whatever they put for their password, um, we're doing the same thing we did for all the other passwords. We're concatenating the salt in front of it, and then we're running SHA-1 on top of that. And then our SQL update users set password to their new password, where email, email is equal to their email. And if the affected rows was equal to 1, then we know that we update their password and we return true uh, back to the controller. So right now this result is going to be equal to true, and then what we can do is we can send them to this view right here, um, view update password success and we can just take a quick look at that I'm just gonna have to open it up here and you'll see inside view update password success all we're doing is we're saying um, your password has been updated and you may now log into the site and then they can just um, they can go over to the site here and they can click login and uh, and away they go so if for some reason we were unable to update their password in the database then result is going to be false here and then we're going to go down to this else block um, and we're just sending them back to view update password and then sending this error message along with it but I'm not really expecting us to you know ever reach this because um, by that time in the model we already have a successful connection to the database and it should be able to update that field in the database no problem so that's basically all you have to do to create a secure password retrieval system and thanks for listening